Hey everyone, it's Little Lolly Cat here, and I had a few requests from people asking for advice for beginner ABDLs, or those who are just getting into ABDL, like what to buy and stuff like that. So, <laughs> my first biggest piece of advice is if you are going to buy a pacifier, buy an adult one. And I know loads of people just say, oh no, it's fine, I'll just get the kids one. But you'll find very quickly after using a kid's one that your teeth will ache because they're not made for your mouth. And the adult ones can be kind of pricey, which is a pain, because obviously you can pick up like a couple for a pound from some places for the kids ones. But there are some cheaper options out there, like you can get an adult one for about six pound. And one that fits and doesn't hurt is worth far more than one that doesn't fit and it's going to cause pain and probably going to mess up your teeth if you keep using them. That is my biggest piece of advice for anyone out there. Like I know how tempting it is because a lot of people when they first buy stuff they want to buy it in person as opposed to over the internet and honestly it's far easier over the internet trust me. You're going to find far more things that you like. It might be a little bit more expensive on some things but in general it's going to be far better. I do suggest for people who are just starting out picking up something like sippy cups or even straw tumblers because straw tumblers are used by adults and kids and you can kind of get away with them a bit more. They are like things like that. They're things you can pick up and you don't need to justify in any way shape or form and you shouldn't feel the need to justify it. If you justify it at the shop people are going to start questioning who it's for and they're going to more question that it's for you than anything else. It's like when a man comes to a shop counter and buys underwear, like lingerie, and starts going on about, oh, oh, it's for my girlfriend, it's for my girlfriend, I swear it's for my girlfriend. She asked me to pick this up, I swear it's for my girlfriend. You're instantly going to think that's for you, don't lie. <laughs> and if someone else worked in a shop, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you kind of pick up on that part. However, if someone picks up a sippy cup or something like that, you're going to assume it's for a younger brother, a younger sister, a cousin, a child, stuff like that. You're not going to assume it's for the person. Another big thing is, if you're going to get them, and you're new to it all, try not to buy everything at once. And it might be tempting to go out and buy just everything you need, like, for people who are going to go out and just buy, like, incontinence diapers, or and a pacifier, and a bottle, and a sippy cup, and all the things that they want, and bibs and stuff like that. But if you do this, you're at high risk of kicking off a binge and purge cycle, which a lot of people have issues with. I very luckily haven't really had that too much, but I do know people that have, which a binge and purge cycle means that people dive in kind of too quickly, they overindulge and then it kind of loses their appeal or they have a sudden feeling of guilt or stuff like that towards it so they suddenly purge it and get rid of everything and this can be extremely expensive for some people I've heard horror stories of how bad it has been but and basically you need to take this baby steps at a time for yourself as well I find that if you do things one by one it doesn't overwhelm you, you don't overindulge, and then you become more sort of aware and comfortable about it. I do suggest buying samples online, especially if you're like me and you only like ABDL brands. I would suggest buying a few samples online of different kinds and then just trying them out and seeing what you like. But you will be surprised probably that when you first get like diapers and nappies, that if you aren't used to them, you won't be able to wet straight away. And stuff like being able to wet while lying down or sitting or standing and walking around and stuff like that is stuff that comes with time. It's not something that is there right at the beginning. Some people, it can take months and months and months or even years to be able to wet just like lying down and stuff like that. But other people, like I took, it was my second ever proper diaper that I wore that I managed to wet in, but I had to train myself to do so as well. So I drank a lot to like encourage things and I had to find out what like position was most comfortable for it to begin with. So I ended up kind of like crouched and squatted, <laughs> which is very common, but now because I'm used to it and the mentality and the training is there, 
so that I know that if I feel the thickness between my legs, I'm safe, I can pee if I need to. Whereas before that, you aren't totally sure and you're always a bit worried in case you leak and then you get make a mess and stuff like that. You've always got that subconscious part back there kind of being like, you can't do this, this is why. So it may take a few t turns. Um, people will suggest things like if you sit on a toilet, it'll like help some people. If you squat down, much like like infants do, it does help. Um, running water, wear them for a longer period of time and drink a lot. <laughs> All these do help and just make sure you learn to feel secure in them because if you feel secure in them then it really really helps because then you know that you can trust them and that there's not going to be an accident. <laughs> Which is really weird advice to give someone but you know. <laughs> It's, it's themed. Like, every so often I realise what I'm saying out loud and would sound really weird given in any other context. But yeah, that's quite simple, those ones. Um, I would say try and stick to at least medium to better brands at the start so that you, your brain gets used to being able to trust them because if you go for a low quality brand you're not, and you leak, then you're going to always have that mentality of, oh no, what if I leak? Um, if you're too paranoid about it, there's always plastic pants to wear over the top. If you wear cloth diapers, make sure that you have the terry towel padding in between because you're going to need around like six inches of it comfortably to make sure it doesn't really leak. And you are also going to need to wear obviously plastic pants over the top to stop it from leaking anywhere else if you overuse. Um, I'm trying to think of other pieces of advice to give you. Generally, I would say there are a lot of cheap baby deal brands out there. Like, obviously, Little for Big is relatively cheap. Once you sit down under, aren't too bad. The Baby Bear Boutique, like I've said, is like the cheapest ones that you'll probably find out there, plus shipping. And Abedale Marketplace does the same. Although the Baby Bear Boutique has a ton of new pacifiers and stuff like that in there now. So, if you check any of these ones out, they will be far easier for you to buy from, like, you know, and actually know that you're getting good quality because these places do good quality, they are good quality and they're all made pretty much in the same place as well, so you know they are of equal quality, just the prices vary, and the styles obviously. So beyond that, I would say if you're new to ABDL, ignoring the months you've gotten past all this, it can be, I know a lot of people when they're very new to it as well are very determined on this is what age I am, this is it. Like when I was new to it I was very stuck on I am five and that's because that's when I started progressing. So I am five, I have the mentality of what I was when I was five, I used sippy cups back then, stuff like that, I <laughs> used a potty back then. But that's a weird story for another day. Um, like I was actually talking about trained at that age. Stuff like that. But, so, <laughs> yeah, like, realistically, people are far more complex than that, than putting it down to a certain age. Like, I say I was age five because at age five I was actually really independent. I could read, I could write. Um, <laughs> I, like, I did most things myself. I could cook, I could bake, I could do all these things, and I didn't actually really need parental supervision. But at the same time, I had this regressive streak, which meant that I went far younger. And I don't think people picked up on it because I was always very independent. So the kids aren't that simple, and adults are most definitely not that simple. People tend to pick and choose what they like. So at that age I used to suck my thumb and I used to use like the baby little baby bottles and stuff like that. I used to do use those when I was five. So you kind of stick with what you're comfortable with. Don't let people force you into something that you're not comfortable with. It's different coming to terms with an idea after some time that you're comfortable with than someone forcing it on you. Make sure that you are comfortable because you don't want to have a negative experience and kind of ruin it for yourself. Um, don't focus too much on what does someone of this age group do though. They don't do all this or they can't speak and stuff like that. Focus on what you like, what you feel comes naturally. Like eventually you may find yourself going younger 
but you can focus on that like focus on what is in you not what other people say or do because this is complete this is complex this is unique and personal to you this is your own experience and it shouldn't be defined by others so meet other littles find out what you like what you don't like find out experiences and stuff like when I first came into it I was very much like because the few brats I had came across were all spoiled brats not normal brats spoiled brats so I was like no I'm a little I'm not a brat I don't really like brats but then and I had negative connotations of it but when I got older and I was more in tune with my little side I realized that actually I have this quite mischievous streak so I am a bit of a brat but I'm not a spoiled brat <laughs> like I know when there there's times to push boundaries and there's times to not and I still have that sweet affectionate caring side well I can still be extremely mischievous when I want to be that's that's okay that's not a bad thing and it's really to do with your personality like like you said, like me and Andrew are brats and Nicole's a nice one. Because Nicole, she is, she's super sweet. And she doesn't have that same mischievous and a little bit of a bossy streak to her that me and Andrew seem to have. But, yeah. It's all to do with you and your personality and what you're comfortable with. Just slowly come to terms with it if you can. And understand that even people like me, like I've had people say stuff like, um, one person I talk to a lot has told me about, because he's been quite anxious about trying things, and his anxiety is because during the day he doesn't feel little, he's in his adult mindset, he doesn't think about diapers or anything like that at all, but then once it comes to night time, he's like, oh, I kind of want a pacifier and a onesie and a diaper, and I want these things, but I don't want them during the day. This is not weird, this is perfectly normal. Not everyone walks around every second of every day thinking about ABDL and if they do there's a good chance that it's dominating their life a bit too much and they probably need to step back a bit or else they might end up in the purge cycle which is always a risk. Um, it's one thing for it to be kind of there and then dominating. There's like the difference. There is. There is a clear difference between the two and you need to be careful with it. Obviously, like I've said before, you can't like overtake your life. You need to still be able to be a functioning adult. You still need to be able to make friends and stuff like that and have vanilla conversations and have the vanilla life as well as the more, you know, magical side. <laughs> Since I keep calling vanillas muggles. Um, like, you can have both. It's normal. You're a complex human being. You don't have to be one or the other. You can date normally but still have this. You can have a normal wedding but still have this. You can be married and have kids but still have this. These are not mutually exclusive things and please be aware that they aren't. It won't dominate your entire life. It won't. And when you grow to accept the fact that it won't dominate your entire life and that it shouldn't dominate your entire life, then you'll have a much more healthy relationship with it. And that'll help with the, obviously, the purge cycles for when people start because if you realise that, it tends not to happen the same. And I am hoping this is a bit helpful. Obviously I've gave some advice. Um, for nappies, I would say listen to reviews, um, look at the sizing, stuff like that. Have a tape measure handy because you can get your actual sizes then. Always, if it says by the waist, go by the hip size if you're a woman because Wherever is thickest is going to be where it is, so you're going to have to look at that. Like, I have, was it like my waist, my hips are something like 36 inches, so I'm on the edge for most nappies right now. No, they're 35, they're just under, that was it. They're just under the edge for where it should be for the hips, so they're normally tighter on the hips, but my waist is like 24, so there is the big difference, <laughs> and it's kind of, you know. If it's too tapped, it's probably going to fit better if you're like shaped like me. Just ask people, speak to people in the community, avoid groups that seem toxic as well because they can put you off and they can make things seem worse than they are. And just get to know yourself, it's really what you like and what you want. Um, it's just that. 
that's the thing, it's such a personal thing, so just look, in, look into yourself and think, what do I want? What is it that appeals to me? Like, obviously I'm a girl, but, and I can be girly, but most of the time I'm more not. I'm usually more boyish than girly. I like more boyish stuff, so I tend to get more boyish stuff. I tend to do more boyish routines than super girly ones. Although, as times have progressed, I've gotten a bit more girly. And that's fine. If you're a guy and you're a baby girl, that's fine. Don't feel guilty about it. Just embrace it. Really, embrace it. If you're a girl and you're more of a baby boy, embrace it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the label or the title and just understand that this is just a way for some other people in the community to kind of address and understand you a bit better. They're more umbrella terms than they are anything else. That's why I prefer the term little because it means that you could be anything. <laughs> and I hope this is helpful for you. Okay? So I will talk to you all later. Bye everyone.